welcome NutritionRadio.org listeners. This is Lonnie Lowry, the university nutrition professor of over 20 years and podcast host of long-running shows like Iron Radio. Come on in. Weight management tips. Hey, everybody. Today we've got sort of a science story for you, or at least an experiential one, about weight gain, not weight loss. So typically when we talk about weight management, we talk about weight loss or fat loss, and we've certainly done our share of that already here uh, on this show. But weight gain is another thing, and those of you who have tried to undertake quality weight gain, meaning body composition improvements that are mostly muscle mass, it's very, very hard. Uh, in many ways, it's similarly fr- frustrating to the weight loss or the fat loss kinds of challenges just in the other direction. But there are a lot of people interested in this. Just to give you one piece of evidence, if you look at Google search terms that are very popular, big arms is a very popular search term, just big arms. Now, we're not going to talk about just big arms today. Maybe we'll do that in the future. But to have big arms, you need to grow all over. So how do you do that? One approach is where you distribute your protein and your calories throughout the day. Uh, Calories meaning the fuel sources, typically carbohydrates and fats. So let me tell you a little story. Uh, A young man came to me a couple of years ago, actually quite a few years ago now, and he was built for a strong man, and he wanted to compete. He felt he wasn't quite big enough. So our strategy was to take advantage of the morning hours. Now, why do that? There's a couple of reasons. One, the literature suggests that glucose tolerance, right, carbohydrate use, if you will, uh, is better in the morning hours. There's greater insulin secretion from the pancreas, uh, and that's certainly an anabolic or anti-catabolic kind of hormone. Uh, There's more muscular activity earlier in the day, so muscular contractions help take up carbohydrates from the blood, glucose from the blood. Uh, You get that GLUT4 for you nerds, uh, translocation to the cell membrane. Literally little doorways get activated from contractions and that helps the muscles take up the carbohydrates and store them as glycogen or, uh, you know, use them as fuel. But the morning hours could be one trick uh, that you could use to try to gain weight. And that's what we did. We actually had him consuming large amounts of quality carbohydrates earlier in the day, sort of breakfast and second breakfast, about every two to three hours, uh, oatmeal and berries, for example. Now, it's very difficult to eat fibrous carbs copiously every hour and a half or three hours, whatever. But he was a huge guy, used to similar things. Now, no one is saying to avoid calories and carbohydrates in the evening hours, but this was just a focus, trying to lean into some of these more advantageous times during the day. Like I said, arguably both hormonal and muscular activity might be a good time to do something like this. Certainly, you wouldn't want to diet in the morning or undereat and then try to go train and then, I don't know, jam a bunch of calorie, carbohydrate calories in the evening. I've actually seen gurus suggesting that. And as a physiologist, I just don't agree with that. Uh, It just doesn't seem like an ideal thing. Now, chronobiology and the idea of manipulating nutrient intake uh, over time within a day, it's something that might be more of a nuance than total calorie and protein intake. I mean, calories and protein are king in many ways, obviously with the training stimulus. But this was something that we were able to do, uh, especially because this client, this uh, athlete, he, he liked breakfast food. So great. This is something that we could focus on. So we did something similar to what I was doing uh, in my youth when I was trying to take up more space as a bodybuilder, and that was consuming carbohydrates about six servings at a time. So if you think about something like a little packet of oatmeal, it'd be roughly the equivalent of six of those. Now, it wasn't always just the oatmeal. It might have been whole grain toast or something else, but there was that idea that you're literally eating multiple servings of carbohydrates every you know, limited amount of time, like I said, 90 through maybe 180 minutes throughout the morning. I know that's a big spread. Each person's going to be different in that regard. But that's what he was able to do, throw in some healthy things like blueberries or things that might have functional benefits as well, and obviously bring protein in during that time too. You know, 30, 40, 50 grams of protein with each of these meals as well. Does this sound copious? 
Yes, he's huge. He was already big to begin with. He just wasn't big enough. But this is the kind of approach that might be helpful for some people. Again, if you like breakfast foods, if you want to take advantage of both muscular activity and you know, the tendency of the body to secrete hormones or treat carbohydrates somewhat differently throughout the day, one way to do that is one possible tip. Now, this is completely anecdotal, but I knew that I got up to about almost 230 pounds doing this uh, regularly. It's really hard to overeat. And again, that's the frustration with weight management for weight gain. You have to consume far more calories than you expend. You can't just spend six hours in the gym. You have to eat an awful lot. Uh, And then with always the idea that it can't just be fat. Fats alone is not going to move weight. Certainly if you're a bodybuilder in the off season, you can't just put on so much fat, you'll never get it back off. But combined with a four or five days a week, heavy lifting stimulus, right? To drive anabolism. Um, I was able to put on a lot of weight and he in fact gained an enormous amount of weight. I don't remember this precise number, but it was dozens of pounds and he won at 19 years of age. He won the state strongman competition a bigger person tends to move more weight and obviously he was practicing his strongman and doing the heavy lifting and everything as far as the stimulus goes but this am approach did help it also sort of fueled this pre-workout idea i know phil stevens is a, he was always a big fan when you talk about peri workout pre mid post workout nutrition right fuel and building blocks at the right times like surrounding the workout he was always a fan of why don't you eat beforehand and hit the gym replete, right? Fulfilled, energized, ready to go instead of waiting until you're depleted and then try to do it all after the fact. Again, there's no doubt strongman or off-season bodybuilder, they're going to eat in the evenings too and they're going to eat a lot. But it's sort of just a focus that we can undertake that I think can be fun for some people. One important caveat here is your chronotype. Are you a morning person, like a morning lark? Or are you a night owl and you rather do all your stuff in the evening? When you work out is also an issue. Uh, I know in both the cases that I'm mentioning here, we're talking about two guys who like to train early afternoon, right around you know, maybe 1 p.m., that kind of thing. Not everybody can do that, obviously. And that could have some impact, of course, on the nutrient take. And there's many, many factors that come into play here. So if you are the kind of person that has the ability to consume lots of carbohydrates early in the day, train early afternoon instead of, let's say, at 8 p.m. or that kind of thing, uh, it may especially work for you. It's it's not something that's mandatory. A lot of this is speculation, but it's It's a fun tip for those who, again, are predisposed. There are a couple of other things at work here as well. Some food interactions between dairy and oats and berries, for example. All really good things in their own way. Uh, And carbohydrates themselves. Carbohydrates are protein sparing. Uh, They swell a muscle when the glycogen is stored, right? One gram of glycogen typically described as being stored with three grams of water. So there's an element of fullness. I know some people really like keto and high fat intake, and this approach wouldn't be for you. There's also the option of doing some fasted uphill walking, maybe a 4% grade at three miles per hour, just to do a fat specific calorie drain every morning before you launch into this high carbohydrate environment. The idea of that is fat balance. You can find discussions about this in the literature too. Uh, Fat balance, fat intake versus fat burning. But the idea would be every morning if you can do that uphill walk on a treadmill, maybe 10 minutes in, you're even sipping a small amount of protein, 10, 15, 20 grams of protein. It might help with the fat gain that tends to accompany these all out, you know, hyper caloric kinds of situations. It's a weight gain tip for you this week. Consuming more carbohydrates, let's say two servings more than you typically do. Let's say like at 6 a.m., 8.30, and 11 a.m., all before lunch, trying to get in those carbohydrate calories in excess. And if the weight gain is coming mostly around the waistline instead of across the muscle thickness through your shoulders, again, during all this heavy weight training, then you might want to think about some of that before breakfast uphill walking Uh, walk, jog kind of thing outdoors, that sort of thing to try to minimize the fat gain. We'll see you next time. The NutritionRadio.org podcast is for informational purposes only. If you're interested in starting a diet or exercise program, check with your physician, nutritionist, or qualified exercise physiologist in order to make the progress that you need.